Friends from across the coronaverse, this is your friend Tony Gephardt. How you doing? It's been a while. I haven't recorded a solid video for you in quite some time from a tutorial perspective. Now, I've been asked on multiple occasions to do one with Logic Pro on Mac OS using VoiceOver as the screen reader. You probably remember my GarageBand video that I did about seven years ago. Long time. Things have changed. I'm a little bit more mature. Not too much. I think I am. I don't know, but we're going to cut right to the chase. So, presuming that you've installed the program already from App Store, as well as have a little bit of voiceover skills. But if you don't, hallelujah, this is your place to learn. I think I'm a little confident that you can figure this out right alongside me. For any low vision friends out there, I do have my screen being shared for you, as well as voiceover being piped through so my uh, totally VI friends are able to follow along. But we're going to be looking at Logic Pro 10, as it's called in your applications folder, Logic Pro X. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a little fun. We'll play around with it and see what we can figure out together. But right now, I'm going to press Command Tab. Blue back. Finder. Go into Finder. my Applications window. Finder here. And to anybody who is not as familiar with Macintosh, the Finder is the file explorer uh, for your Windows. But for Apple, it is the, it is the Finder. And to access our applications, we need to do Command Shift A. Applications. So Jaws or Jaws. Wow, I've been around Windows so much the last couple of weeks. Voiceover has already indicated that we are in applications. So I'm going to use first letter navigation to find Logic Pro. Lady cast application launchpad application line in application Logic Pro X application. There it is. Let's give it a good old open by pressing Command O. Open. And I just put a solid state drive in this computer, so it's definitely a lot faster than it used to be. Still, uh, still have to wait. Logic Untitled 3, tracks, window, 1, content selected. There it is. Okay, by default, my Logic Pro automatically opens to a new project template. However, I'm going to hit escape here. Dialog, 4, choose, default button. And it's going to bring me to Trust. the default window. Now we're going to... Go all the way to the Close left button. here. Close button. So Logic Pro, similar to GarageBand 10, but on pretty intense uh, uh, performance enhancement drugs, um, has a table that we can interact with that I'm going to navigate to here. Minimize button. Choose a project. Table. Recent row two of four. Selected. So I'm going to interact with this. In table. And I'm going to go at the top. New project. Row one of four. It allows us you to select a new Insert. project. I'm going to use VO keys plus down arrow. And to anybody who doesn't know what the VO keys are, that would be your option and your control key plus the down arrow. So when we press that, recent row two we're four. going to get recent. You are current. Demo projects, row three or four. Demo projects. You are current. My templates, row four or four. And templates. So the cool thing about Logic Pro is it does come with some demo projects that you can fiddle with at your own leisure to do whatever it is that you would want to do to demolish a track. Or make it sound fantastic. One of the two. Uh, for this instance, we're going to create a new project. Okay, so let's let's go back to the top. Demo. Re new project. Row one of four. So I'm going to stop interacting with this. Out of table. And if I press V O right, the the V O keys plus the right arrow. Collection. There's going to be a collection. collection. Now I'm going to let voiceover actually speak here. I I have a habit of pressing my control key because there are times where just voiceover or Jaws or whatever screen reader that I'm using it just keeps talking and talking. And there are moments where it's like I don't want you to talk. I know what it is that I'm doing, but that makes me sound arrogant as crap. So we're going to let it talk, and it'll let you know. Collection. You are currently on a collection. To begin interacting with the items in this list, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. So as you as you heard it say, we can interact with this. The good thing about the speech verbosity with VoiceOver is it lets you know how you can interact with the elements that are on the screen. Very useful for any introductory users. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to navigate here. We're going to press VO keys, Shift, Down Arrow, Option, Control, Shift. An image, empty project, two of two. So the first thing right there is empty project. I want that, but let's uh, let's see what else there is. Factory templates. 
Image, hip hop, two of seven. Image, electronic, three of seven. Image, songwriter, four of seven. Image, orchestral, five of seven. And I'm using my VO keys plus right arrow to go through this list. Image, multi track. Image, music for picture, seven. Image, music for picture. All right, nevertheless, a little redundant. Let's go to the top. Factory template. Image, empty project, two of two. Okay, I want empty projects, so I'm going to stop interacting now that I have it selected, and I'm going to press the VO keys and the end key Choose default button. to go all the way to the right and hit choose. So I'm going to do VO space. Let's open this one. bad boy up. Dialog. One. Content selected. Edit tech. Now, Logic's going to bring us to a new window where we can select how many software tracks or audio tracks that we want to use in our project. If you're not familiar, a software track is something that can be used with MIDI, so virtual instruments. If you have a MIDI controller that you'd like to hook up to be able to play your songs and make, make your keys, do piano, guitar, whatever it is that you want to use on a MIDI controller, that's what you would select. Audio track is kind of like what I I'm doing. I'm talking through a microphone that is emitting live audio. So that's what you would use in that instance. So number of tracks. Let's do software track. Button. Details. Detail. External MIDI. Drummer. Radio button. I'm gonna come audio radio over button here. Software instruments. Selected radio button. One by six. default, it's already selected, and also by default, it puts the number one in that edit box there. So we don't need to do anything with that. However, to navigate with these items on the screen on the logics window, you're usually using VO keys plus left and right. So again, we're going to do this where we do VO and end to go to the create default button. last item on the screen, on which is create. I want to create. We're going to do that. Closing dialog. You are currently on a toolbar. To interact with items in this group, press control, option, shift, down arrow. All right, what do we got going on here? Untitled three, control bar. All right, we are on the Logic Pro window. So, how does this work? This thing's a monster. As I said, this, this is a big upgrade from GarageBand, but it is an amazing program. So I'm gonna do VO right to kind of go through the elements that are on the screen, and I will try to describe in best detail on what each one does, and we'll take a look inside each one of them. So let's do that. Let's do VO right. Library group. Inspector group. Tracks group. Tracks group. Those are your three major proponents there. Um, and I think I missed one actually from the top. So let me veal left back. Inspect library, control bar, toolbar. So we have a control bar, we have a library, inspector, and a track group. So where do I begin? We'll start with library. So the library here is library group. essentially where you will find all of your installed sample instruments that come with Logic Pro and GarageBand, and it's a browser that can be interacted with. So if there's any experienced voiceover users here, you might have an idea how to reapply some of your knowledge on other programs. And if you're new to this, we'll kind of take a quick dive in here. So I'm going to interact by doing VO shift down arrow. So com uh, option control shift down arrow. In library group, eight items, classic electric, classic electric piano. Horizontal splitter. So right away, it gives me the title of the instrument that I'm on. Search sounds, search text field, blank. And there's a search, search edit field that I can type in whatever it is that I'm looking for. Library, browser. And we've come to the browser. So let's interact with this. Vintage electric piano, 16 of 21. So right Hashtag away, word. by default, my Logic Pro has it to create a vintage piano instrument by default. Now, let's say you want to type with your keys, because you can do that. And if you're experienced with GarageBand, it does the same thing. So I'm going to press Command-K. Musical typing. I think my Logic Pro should be coming through here. I'm going to do a quick double check Finder. just to make sure because I got really excited about Radio doing cast. this video for you guys. Launchpad. I Applic wanted to make sure uh, that all Logic my Pro audio Applic sources Applic were Applic coming through. And if it did and you Applic heard it, well, then you can just ignore this bit. New monitor. Menu. Com. Apple. But Com. Apple. I'm speed. going to make sure. Channels 1 and 2. Oh. Com. Apple. Ladio Cast Channel 1. So output. Ladio. Delete. But. Ladio. Logic. Logic Pro X Channel 2. Good. It did. So you probably heard that. Finder. Fantastic. Logic Pro X. Logic Pro X. All right. Anyways. I don't have my MIDI controller set up at the very moment. So I'm going to turn this off. So anyways, okay. Vintage electric piano. Vintage electric. What are we doing? User channel. User patches. So at the very top, you have user patches, which is custom made instruments that you've assigned and saved through Logic. More of an advanced feature. If there's a request, I can do 
a feature on this, but this is more of a basic introduction. So let's keep going down this list. User channel strip settings. User channel strip. User channel strip settings. Very similar to the one above. Bass. Drum kit. Electronic drum kit. Guitar. Mallet. Orchestral. Percussion. Piano. So on and so forth. So if let's say, what if I wanted to select an instrument in there though? It's like, tell me how to actually select the instrument, Tony. Damn. You would do VO right, and it would open up that menu and give you the instrument that you can select with. So, kind of a basic introduction to the library, fairly self-explanatory. I have faith in you. You can do this. I'm going to get out of that library by doing VO shift up arrow to stop interacting. Now, I'm going to go to the right. Inspector group. So the inspector... Now, this is a very important section of Logic Pro where you will find all of your individual channel strips. What the hell is a channel strip? A channel strip is each individual track and the effects that are assigned to it, your volumes, your pans, your mutes and your solos. All of those things can be accessed in there. So we have one track to our, bleh, one track already created, and it's the this uh, little classical piano vintage keys little cloth uh, instrument. So we're going to interact with our In inspector. inspector. Nine items button. So right out of the bat, all the way to the left, there is a couple of unlabeled buttons, not as significant. The more crucial part of this will be to our right. So just listen and kind of get a little familiar with what you're hearing with where um, what's going on in the inspector here. So I'm going to do VO right. Region, MIDI defaults, table, no selection, button, track, classic electric piano, edit text, classic electric piano, channel strip group. All right, so there's the channel strip group. This is where things get really sexy. So in here, again, we can interact with this and it will show us everything that's going on. So I'm going to interact with this. In classic electric piano, channel strip group, 17 items, classic electric piano, pop-up button. So there's a pop-up button that we can open up to select a different instrument or do something to this in particular. Not commonly used. I don't really use that pop-up menu that often, but maybe someone would. Uh, we'll keep going to the right. Zero dB, gain reduction meter button. Gain More reduction high. meter. So this is where you can control your gain. You open that up and it'll kind of prompt a dialogue. EQ button. EQ, this will open up a, let's, let's press it. Press classic electric piano dialogue, classic electric piano view. Okay. okay so a window has opened up and I can do VO right here. Toolbar button, bypass, check, checkbox. Here's our bypass checkbox. So we can turn that effect on or off. This is, this is uh, very applicable, excuse me, applicable uh, throughout every single plugin and a uh, window that you will see like this. So I'm going to be all right again. Factory default, pop-up button. You are currently on pop-up button. So this is where we can select the particular preset to an effect. And in this instance, it's an EQ that is built into Logic. So I'm going to open this and just give you a quick demo of what we can find. Menu, 21 items. So I'm going to press down arrow here. Setting, undo, dimmed, redo, dimmed. Include plugin, undo, steps and project, undo. Press, factor, previous control, left, right, copy. Paste, dim, load ellipsis. Save as ellipsis, save. Save as default. Recall default. Delete. Dim. O1 drums. Submenu. Okay. So, right off the bat, these are submenus where we can press right arrow to navigate into, very similar to Windows. But these are different EQ options. Are you trying to EQ drums? Are you trying to EQ keyboards? Sub -menu. keyboards? O3 guitar. Submenu. Guitar. O4 horns. Submenu. Horns. O5 voice. Submenu. Voice. O6 mastering. Submenu. O7 EQ tools. Submenu. EQ tools. Or mastering. mastering. Submenu. There's so much crap. They make it so diverse, and it's awesome. Um, super in love with Logic. I can't say that enough. So you kind of get the gist. Uh, we're going to press Escape here and get out of this window. Closing menu. Factory default. Pop-up button. You are currently on a pop-up button. Two. Now I got to press Command-W to close this extra window that popped up when we hit space, or excuse me, VO space on the EQ button. Now in Untitled 3, Tracks, Window, EQ button. Okay, so we're going to keep going to the right, and we're back in our channel strip under this classical piano instrument. Classic electric piano, 3 of 11. E-piano group. You are currently on okay. group. MIDI effects group. So we have a MIDI effects group, which we can go into and do a very similar navigation. Let's, uh, we can go in here. In MIDI this is where we can kind of do, uh, if we want to, uh, if we want to humanize our MIDI, we want to do an arpeggiator of some kind, um, we can select those various options. MIDI FX group. 
Media FX group. Media FX so group. I'm gonna hit VO space. Menu 11 items check mark. No plugin. And it's you gonna let's items. let's go down these options. Arpeggiator. Core trigger. Modify. Press. Modulator. Note repeater. Randomizer. Scripter. Transposer. Velocity processor. Audio units. Sub audio units. Sub menu. There's some audio units. You are, in audio here. units. Sub menu. One native instruments. Sub menu. And, that, and, and that's something to remember is you will see that audio unit submenu in your effects submenus as well when you're adding effects, depending on what third party presets you've installed, whether it be Waves, Isotope, Slate Digital, um, Addictive, Native, uh, various other uh, companies like that that make either samples or effects or plugins that you can add to your Logic Pro, but we can cover that in a later video. But let's press escape and get out of this. Closing menu. And Closing menu. continue onward. Out of the e-piano group. Okay. E Audio FX group. E-piano group. E-piano. So this, this is where you go to select what MIDI preset that you're using. Right now it's by default E-piano, which is one of Logic synthesizers. So we can go in here. E-piano group. List pop -up button. I'm going to go to a list button here and press spa uh, VO space to open that son of a gun up. Menu, 32 items. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of shit in this menu, so we're just going to VO down. Press list, no plugin. Recent, dim. Complete control, submenu. So right there it says recent. Uh, it's going to give you the most used or most recent kind of self-explanatory uh, MIDI plugins that you've used. So I'm going to do VO end. To bring me down to the bottom of this list, AQ MIDI control effects submenu, and Remember there's the multiple different submenus here. AU instruments submenu. So AU instruments. This is the submenu you want to access to load a particular preset or plugin that you've installed for uh, third party. So let's uh, veal right here. AU instruments submenu. Items, Apple submenu. So I have Apple. Archeria submenu. Archeria. It might get loud. Productions might get submenu. Loud. Native instruments submenu. Speedfire audio. Steven Slate. Waves. Submenu. But so on so forth. Closing menu. Self-explanatory. I don't need to go into it. So I'm going to stop interacting here and go to piano. one of the next cooler ditties. Audio FX group. And that's audio effects. This is where we can assign effects and plugins and different various presets to make our mix sound sexy and beautiful. And it works very similarly navigation wise to these other menus that we were going through with the MIDI and the E-piano and all that shit. We're going to do the same thing here and interact with audio FX group. this group here in audio FX group. via shift down arrow and then we are going to go over to list channel EQ group channel EQ audio FX pop-up button excuse me not you list are. there's a pop-up menu now already there's something assigned here there's that channel group that that channel EQ rather that we were messing with earlier that's here and channel EQ group I can interact with this in channel EQ group, three items, bypass, and check, checkbox. It gives me my bypass option. I can VO right. Set button. And I you can click button. on set, my VO space on set, and that'll bring me back to that EQ window that we were fussing with earlier. It'll be the same dealio. Um, and then we can VO right. List pop-up button. And go into that list, very similar to the E-Piano MIDI plugin selection list. This is the same thing, but it works for plugins. However, I want to start with a new plugin, so I'm going to VO shift up out of, channel out of here and VO shift left. Audio FX pop up button. And I'm going to press VO space on here. Menu 22 items check mark, no plugin. So, same thing. Current. Now, Logic Pro comes with a ton of press audio FX pop -up stock button. plugins available for your utilization on your project to make it sound fantastic and beautiful and well comp composed. I'm losing my mind. So, we're going to do VO down arrow and check some of this stuff out, man. Let's do it. Okay. Recent dim channel EQ submenu PS22 spread S submenu. Now these are some recent ones that I've used on some of my projects. Again, there's that recent stereo delay submenu API 2500 vintage console EQ dynamics submenu distortion submenu utility submenu. Okay. Filter submenu delay submenu modulation submenu pitch submenu reverb submenu imaging submenu specialized submenu. EQ, submenu, metering, submenu, amps and pedals, submenu. This is a lot. Multi effects, submenu. I'll tell you what. Audio units, submenu. Okay, we're at the bottom and we've reached that audio unit submenu again. And same applies here. This is where you will find all of your third party 
plugins that you've wanted to install on Logic. So you could go in there to access that, whether it be Waves, Isotope, or whomever. Um, but for this uh, exercise, let's uh, let's do some real world stuff, and let's go up to delay. I know a lot of people like delay, not latency. Latency sucks. Delays better. So let's press D. Dynamics submenu takes us to dynamics. Dynamics submenu delay submenu. There's delay. So I'm gonna veer right into that submenu. Delay submenu five items delay designer submenu echo submenu. I'm gonna veer down sample delay submenu. Stereo delay submenu. There's all types of stuff in here, man. Isn't that crazy? So I'm gonna veer right. Stereo delay submenu two items stereo. So it gives us two options. Dual mono. Dual mono. Dual mono or stereo. Stereo. We're gonna select stereo. Menu item. To choose this menu item, press control. Logic Pro X busy. It's gonna take a second to load it. Classic electric piano. Classic electric piano dialogue. Stereo. Oh my god. Stereo delay. My voiceover is doing some funky. Hold on. Voiceover off. Let's get this guy fixed really fast. Oh hush. Voice over on logic. Okay. Close button. Classic electric. So, piano. um, in an instance where logic will do that to you, because it, it happens from time to time, all you got to do is turn it right off and turn it back on, and it will bring up the window that you're trying to prompt. So, just like we did before with the channel EQ, this brings us to a window where we can do changes to that effect. We can modify it mess with the parameters, if you will, which is completely accessible with voiceover on Logic Pro. Hallelujah! So, I want... Let's first... You know what? I feel like I've been doing way too much talking. Let's hear, Let's listen to music. Musical typing. Classic electric... Now, with Logic Pro, it will give you a ton of presets that you can select with the effect that you applied. And the way you cycle through those presets is by using your left and right bracket. So I'm going to press my right bracket. And do it again. A pro tip, uh, if you'd like to change the octave with your keyboard typing, if you don't know this already, it's Z and X. Let's do it one more time. I think I've had my fun. You get the idea. <laughs> so let's get out of this really fast, okay. Now in I'm going to press Command W to close that effect window. Now we've applied an effect. Tracks, we have. Window, library, search sounds, search text field, blank. And I've also gotten voiceover focus Why? out of Why? the inspector window. Out. So we need to go back to that. Inspector group. You are currently. We're going to go group. back to our inspector. We're going to interact with it. In inspector group. Nine items button. And I'm going to press VO end. Stereo out channel strip group. Takes me to the stereo channel strip which is the master, if you will, like the overall output track. And I'm going to VO left. Classic electric piano, channel strip group. And there's my channel strip again, so I'm going to get in there. In classic electric piano, channel strip group. Go VO right to that effect. Zero EQ, MIDI, e piano group, audio FX group. Okay, you are I'm going to interact. In audio FX group, sing delay group. And there's you my effect here. right there, sing, sing delay, as they likes to call it. Now, we've added an effect. Super cool. That's a good start. And you would do this each time when you're looking to apply an effect. Um, but we're going to stop interacting here and we'll keep exploring through this channel strip group. Out of audio FX group. And go to the right. Audio FX send group. You are so sends are more of an advanced option for applying more of a reverb or delay or certain effect to a bus or an aux group. Um, not necessarily applicable for, applicable for this video, but we can go over that at a later time. Bus group. Stereo output pop-up button. Group. Group pop-up button. Red group. Zero pan. Circular slider. Here's our pan. Okay. So w the way we would do this is we interact. In circular slider. Circular slider so we can do left or right. The VO left and VO right. So let's go to the right. 10 of 63. 20 of 63. 30 of 63. 40 of 63. 50 of 60. 60 of 63. Right channel pan. Musical. 
Mi close button. Minute zoom. Dim. Musical title. Column view. Radio. Music. Column view. Radio. So. Button. Fifty of sixty-three. We'll do the same thing. We'll forty go to of the left. Twenty of thirty of six. Forty of six, six, six. Musical typing. Classic electric piano. Dialogue. Starting. Cool beans. Okay. We'll stop. Sitting. Options. Control. Yeah. Stop. Control. Option. Shift. Up arrow. Control. Right arrow. Let's see. Stopping keyboard help. I don't know how that guy got turned down. Hello. Podcast out. Column view. Radio button. Well, there you go. That's how you turn on keyboard help, guys. One is... two. Option control K. Value indicator. Out, out, out. Pro tip. Inspector. In, classic. In, cla so. Minus. We're kind of by our pan again. Value indicator. Minus 7.1 dB. Clip level button. Plus 0 0.0. Volume fader. If I veal right twice, I now get to the volume for this. And it's by default at 0, 0.00 dB. Don't worry, it's not muted. I can change this. I can turn it down. We can bring it to the negatives. Wow. And bring it up. Bring it to the positives. But only goes up to six decibels and you don't want it too loud because once you export your track you may not realize you're peaking your meters and your volume everything's going to distort and that wouldn't be good uh the remainder of the channel strip here mute uncheck checkbox solo uncheck checkbox is the mute and solo Classic electric. however you can use s and m for that from the logic window same as garage band and various other digital audio workspace programs is it has very universal keystrokes like s m and um to toggle your metronome one bar, one, is k mini monitor metronome click 40s one bar 40s space bar will play and stop the letter r will record the the enter key will bring you to the beginning of your track to cycle through bars and measures is your comma and period three bars one b one division one two bars one b one division one bar one b one two bars one b three bars one b four bars one b one division okay to create a new audio track from the current window is command option A. To create a new software track from the current window is command option S. And yeah, I mean, that's that's really just a basic introduction to using voiceover with uh, Logic Pro here. Um, now in the instance, what if you're working with multiple tracks? It's like, Tony, you need to cover that. Come on, man. So I'm gonna create a new track. I'm going to create an audio track. Command option A. Sometimes it will not indicate. However, the way that you cycle through tracks in that inspector, because that inspector is going to be your best friend, I expect you to inspect. Wow, that was a terrible joke. And your up and your down arrow will cycle through each particular track. So let's go back to our up. inspector. I'm going to stop interacting with everything. Inspector group. And I found my you inspector. I'm going to inspect it. In inspector group. Nine items button. I'm going to VO end to go, to, left channel strip. go to the end here. VO left. Audio one channel strip group. And there's that audio one. one. Now I want to go back to my software track and mess more with my piano. So I'm going to press my up arrow. Classic electric piano channel strip group. There it is. You are currently on channel strip group inside of it. Down arrow. It's not going to say it right away, but you can clarify with voiceover by doing VO right. Region. You are currently on text element. Oh, it brought me all the way to the left. Audio default table. So no select VO button. right Track. here. Audio one. Audio one. Channel strip group. And you are currently on channel strip group. Now, if, <clears throat> once you get comfortable with Logic Pro, a lot of the time, especially when you have multiple recorded tracks going all at once with a multi-track uh, project going on, you may not need to always indicate via the inspector which track you're on for recording and such because um, you'll be able to solo. You'll be able to solo solo out tracks by using S, which is very helpful in this instance. Uh, let's throw out some more key commands. Okay. Control I. It'll turn on your monitor, your input monitor for tracks. It's important. It's important. You want to be able to hear yourself when you sing and scream and rap and spit. Control R will arm your recording. You need it. Need it armed. Logic needs to know, hey, I want I want to use this track. I want to record on this. I expect it to work. Hello. And let's see here. What else can we show? What else can we do? What else can we do? Okay. I know a lot of the Blind and VI crew likes to use USB microphones. So when you want to change a device, okay, like if you want to use a Blue Yeti, if you want to use an interface of some kind, uh, some external 
audio source. Logic will recognize that you've plugged in a new device, and it will ask you if you want to use it or not. Just hit VO space on use. However, in this, in an instant where it will not do that, we can do the preferences. We can go to our preferences and do it ourselves. So let me show you how we do that. So we're going to do command comma to go to our preferences. Preferences, dialog, preferences, startup action, default template, dim, auto backup, recent So items. we need to find the audio section. Preferences, toolbar. There's a toolbar here. Toolbar. Let's interact with that by doing VO shift down arrow. In toolbar. 11 items, general. Option, control, shift, down arrow. General, selected, button. General, selected. We need to go to the right, VO, shift, excuse me, VO, right. Audio, button. We're going to do VO, space. You are currently on a button. Inside, press audio, button. Okay, it's selected. We're going to stop interacting with this toolbar. Out of toolbar. And we're going to go to the right, VO, right. General, editing, I slash, audio file, MP3, tap, core audio, enabled, check, output device. Okay, you here's the output. Element. This is the output device. If we VO right, it's going to give us a pop-up menu. Built-in output, pop-up button. Where we output can select menu. what we want. Menu five items, check mark, aggregate device, aggregate device, check mark, zoom audio, Scarlet one, system setting, system setting. Okay. Select which one you would like in this instance, so we're going to hit escape. Closing menu, built-in out. Now we're going to do VO right. Input device. Here's our input. Scarlet one, I two zero USB, pop-up button. And input same device, goes button. here. This is where we would select menu five the items, device check. that we want. Zoom audio device, loopback audio, loopback audio, zoom audio, check mark, system setting. We're going to hit escape. Closing menu. Scarlet one two zero USB pop up button input device pop up. and to select the one that you want all you have to do is VO space you're good bam the menu closes and you can do VO end to bring you to the end here apply changes dimmed button and there'll be an apply changes button right now it's dimmed because I didn't make any changes but for you if you were be if you were to be doing this you would apply that you'd be good hit command W and try that monitor see if that sucker works. But thanks, guys. I think it's a wrap for this video. If you liked it, give me a like. Let me know down in the comments if you want more videos that revolve around Logic Pro or just more voiceover videos. These are fun, man. I love doing these, especially for you guys. You guys are my friends. I love you. And uh, yeah, stay alive in that coronaverse out there, okay? Peace and love.